Welcome back to Queen Beauty Podcast, the self-care kickback with your host, Elise. And Quandris. Join our journey on adulting, self-love, and wellness mixed with a few laughs. And giggles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember, you can find this podcast episode and more by tuning into our website, www.queenbeautypodcast.com. All right, everyone. So last week we discussed tapping into nature and the idea of nature and beauty within and, um, and its grounding purposes and helping mm-hmm. in how uh, nature can help ground us. So this time we're going to expand on the idea of capturing beauty through photography. Yay. So we have with us a special guest, Mrs. Yvonne Clark, founder of YEC Creations. Um, and so before we get into her bio, you can quickly, you can find her on Instagram at YEC underscore creations. So please go and follow her right now. Right, and right now. Beautiful work. <laughs> right, right now. And um, I'm going to get into her bio because I really need her to get into our conversation about back to school and you'll shortly find out. Um, but Yvonne is a proud graduate of Trenton Central High School and has an associate's degree from Mercer County Community College in Fine Arts, as well as a BFA from Moore College in Art and Design. Not only is Miss Yvonne, Mrs. Yvonne, a small business owner, but she is also a stay-at-home mom who homeschools her two beautiful children, Micah and Evelyn. Yvonne's husband, Ahmed, encouraged her to start her business 10 years ago, and they haven't looked back since. And a decade is amazing. So clap it up for Yvonne. Woo! (laughs) A decade of work. Has it been 10 years? It's been 10 years and it snuck up on me. I only, I only remember because I was a nanny at the time and that kid turned 10 and I was like, dang, 10 wow. years. Wow, yeah. <laughs> you, you've surpassed most businesses in longevity. That's it. It was plenty of times I wanted to quit. So <laughs> I'm glad I stayed around for now. That's awesome. And that's so inspiring. And you inspire so well, like you really do. I really love and enjoy watching your social media, how you engage with and connect with your audience is really good. And, um, and I think I told you before, um, on a post that you encouraged me to get a photo shoot, because I've never done it when I went on vacation. And I've been watching your post. If I lived in New Jersey, girl, you would be my whole sur- source of photo shoot. <laughs> But no, um, you're so inspiring, girl. It's Thank beautiful. you. That means a lot. No, I was going to say, when I come back to Jersey, I'm probably going to call you for, I'm trying to go and fit you in for a photo shoot somehow. <laughs> right. Yo, so we're going to um, get kicked off with the back to school spin, QB spin. We always take a topic and chop it up for a little bit and talk about it. So it's back to school for a lot of people. We're in the South, so back to school is a lot quicker than it is um, up north, but this is back to school month. Um, it's the feel of we're about to get back to school. And so Kwanjis had made a, a interesting statement about her son right before we started this episode. So I want to explore that a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so I was explaining to Elise that um, he was so excited to go back. And then all of a sudden he's like, to go back can I just stay home again I want to be homeschooled and he's like we could just go to the home I don't even know how he knows all the information that he knows <laughs> but he's like I could just be homeschooled instead <laughs> you homeschool last year we home yeah we did virtual last year for the whole year and it was like it was it was a lot because <laughs> I was working full-time too so yeah it was it was a lot and um it was hard at first and then we got the hang of it and then it was just like a well-oiled machine mm-hmm. by the end of it um and now he's like I could do this I want to you know just do it all the time <laughs> listen there is a freedom in homeschool but it's yeah it's not built for the week okay um, right but, what's the freedom in it I know, that's what I want to know and I don't have children so I just want curious what's the freedom in it um, for us personally, so we're typically done school by 12 o'clock or one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. We do, um, Monday to Thursday school. And then Friday, it's like a fun day or a field trip day, or just leave mommy alone day. And then <laughs> we do school five weeks. And then the sixth week is just like a break week because like we, we with mommy all day, every day. So it's trying to, for me, mostly to get like a mental break and for the kids to get a mental break for me. 
Um, <clears throat> it's also like great to um, vacation besides the pandemic, but you can go on vacation when kids start school. Right. And a lot of discounts when they are gone. Right. <laughs> That's actually a nice nugget. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, right. And then, you know, when Six Flags and Sesame, everybody goes to school, it's emptier when everybody's in school. Right. So I'm pretty sure I'm missing a whole lot of other great things, but those are my highlights that I'm just like, a little bit of school, take a lot of breaks, vacation when you want. Boom. I always considered virtual, like homeschooling. And this past year taught me that it's something that could be it really could be like it's not I mean, completely far fetched. The fact that you did it with a full time job is yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. I still don't understand that. I still don't get it. <laughs> like, I don't do all. I don't do that. <laughs> so what's okay. your plan now that Michael has made this comment about one not wanting to go back to regular school, traditional school? hug and pat him on the back and then just kind of like talk about it unpack the feelings but he's going to school tomorrow oh my god so that's (laughs) happening like it's yeah (laughs) give him a hug pat him on the back that works i was surprised to hear him say that though because i thought he was excited about going back to school He's my social it's butterfly. A- I was surprised to hear it too. Like, you know, like, I know, you know he likes the interactions and stuff like that. So I, I feel like for him, school, going into school and having that social experience is the better option for him. Social aspect is something that you have to really be committed to for sure. But it's easier when you have a lot of other homeschool people around you. We kind of just oh, like yeah. together. But otherwise, a lot of homeschoolers put their kids like extracurricular activities so their kids mm-hmm. can have friends outside of like school situation right. I'm sure it's important to do that do you do that with yours you have a social yeah Yvonne so I so we have a close-knit family and like we go to church and like all of our friends hang out and our age limit age groups are kind of <laughs> close so oh like that but then like my sister-in-law is thinking about doing it, but she doesn't have that per se. So she's going to do join a co-op where it's just like a bunch of other homeschool families, but that can be tricky with the dynamics and everything. So right. I'm just a co-op person because it's more of a strict schedule. Right. Mm-hmm. We're lucky. Good. I have it in my back pocket because you know how I feel about the way they treat our black boys in these school systems. So I just like, I had almost pulled them out once. And I said this, they got they got about one more time <laughs> because it's and it's just very interesting because not to segue conversations, but I had a little girl in schools and I've never had phone calls or anything like that. And he's a good kid, but as soon as they do any single thing, it's like it's a phone call or whatever. And so I got I have my eye on the situation, <laughs> and if I feel like it's to the point now, this school has been pretty good. I like I like the school he's at right now. Um, but if I had that type of situation, I have no hesitation and no fear like I had before when just homeschooling him. Yeah, that's cool. So Yvonne, let's talk about the beauty behind the lens. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't even talk. <laughs> so pretty much we really want to get personal, like understand, you know, why you decided to go down this role, like what what was that why moment for you when you decided, you know, you wanted to be a photographer professionally? So it's funny because I've growing up, like I was really into Cosmo Girl magazine. I was like, oh, who takes these pictures? I want to do that. But I didn't know that like women can do it. And like, that's not something that like black people can do. Mm-hmm. So when I got older and I started seeing like, okay, this is an option, but I don't know how to pursue it. So I go to school for photography, we'll see. But a friend of mine gave me a camera for free. And then I started taking pictures of the little nanny baby, the baby I was nannying, however you say that. Um, yeah. And then people, I put them on Facebook and people was like, oh my God, this is nice. And I was like, oh, well, we should like, I mean, I should like keep, keep doing this because I got something going on. And then around that time, a few of my friends were like having babies and mm-hmm. I just noticed a trend of like being burnt out and they just like tired, always messy bums, spit up and poop all over them. And I was like, well, let's have fun. Like, let's just get dressed up, do our hair and makeup play in some clothes and just take pictures and that's kind of how I started to where I developed now nice and and then I found a mentor who was doing this on another level and I was like "Mm, okay framework wording I can take it 
to another level, another level a lot quicker than what I would have been doing if I was like learning on my own. So that's really how I started. And really my focus has always been on like women, moms particularly, just uh, who just need some loving. Right. Ice in their life. That's awesome. That's a great platform. I actually really, really love that. And it's, it's nothing like when you're having like an off day um, to just get dressed up. Right. Put on, like you said, put on some makeup, do your hair, even if you don't have anywhere to go, like you just being is enough. Right. And I think yeah. that that's something that's like, you kind of forget that you are enough to get dressed up. You don't need an excuse, right? right. You don't need a reason. You just being is enough. And so I love that. And that's something that, especially when you have a newborn that you can kind of forget, because it's just like all about every single body else, except for you. They be alive. It don't matter what right. I do. Right. <laughs> But it's actually some really great homeschool advice that I got from another mom. Mm -hmm. She's like, even though I'm home, I don't go anywhere. Do your hair, do your makeup, put some real clothes on so you can feel like a human being. And I was just like, I don't have the time or energy to do that. But then when I do make time to do it, I'm like, oh, okay, I feel cute. I'm going to be a little cute <laughs> with my attitude as well. It goes a long way. Feeling good and looking good, just doing a little bit. I mean, when we first had to shut down, I've been remote the whole entire time. So we haven't gone back, but I know the days that I decided to not do getting dressed, I felt like it the whole day. Like, I, I mean, yeah. I even answered the phone like it. Like, it was like, well, oh, you well. must not be awake. Like, what is this? Like, right. <laughs> but when I decided, you know what, I'm gonna actually put some clothes on. So now I make it a point, like I put clothes on every day and go outside and make sure I get a walk. I have a whole morning routine that I value because it's like the time that's so for me, but it was something about getting dressed every day and being ready, ready for whatever, even though I might not see a person the whole day, but it does make you feel good. So that's awesome. I really like that. And I know I kind of went through the same thing too about, you know, the getting dressed and especially, um, you know, chasing around the kids and the dog and this and that. It's like, do I do this in hills? <laughs> like, I just, I wasn't sure, like, you know, like, do I get dressed up for this? Right. But yeah, you do. You have to, because um, at least sometimes you have to do what makes sense so that you can just feel better about it. just makes you feel better about, you know, yourself and like what's happening <laughs> around you. Right. And then just in so. case you got to go run out and get groceries, you're not looking like a homeless person. Hello. Oh my gosh. Because I really was one day. I like, I saw myself <laughs> Like, you know, you see your reflection in like a car that you go by and I'm like, oh my God, is that me? Like, this is crazy. Like, oh, let me go back in the house and put something more. I can't, I can't do this. Absolutely. <laughs> so like with respect to your photography in this whole vibe of just getting dressed, you don't have anywhere to go, but you're going to take a picture. I love the fact that you do that because of the memories that you can provide for a, a for a woman for a person um positive self-image like we talk about positive self-image on the deeper aspect all the time but sometimes it's really empowering to say look I look good and I have this picture right that I look really good yeah, I did a, camp a campaign once that was just like you don't have a reason it's not your birthday it's not your anniversary mm -hmm. just because like we don't do a photo shoot just because. And here's your reminder. Here's your reminder of how, how great you are, of how powerful you are, how strong you are. Because we tend to forget because we're the ones who's always taking care of everyone. And then we're like, well, woe is me or I'll put myself on a back burner. But it's okay to just take care of yourself. I mean, self-care is one of those words that kind of sprouted over the years, which is yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes we let our self-care still wait too long to get to there. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I do self-care once a month that's too long for me. I kind of need it like once a week, maybe two times a week. But right. And how do you, what's your ideal day of once a week routine self-care? What's that? What's that look like for you, Ron? A routine. So, so here's, here's two. Yes, sir. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I am terrible at being intentional about self-care. And here's my reason or my excuse for myself. Not, it's not a good one. Um, because I'm a business owner and I'm a stay at home mom. So those, uh, that's already a lot of job titles. Mm -hmm. And then I also homeschool my kids. It's like, I never really leave the house. 
So um, I have to hyper focus on a lot of things and then I forget that I need to take care of myself. But the only time I remember is when I'm like snippy and snappy and like emotional or hormonal. And I'm just like, what, why do I feel like crap today? And it's like, well, maybe because you're hormonal and also maybe because you didn't take care of yourself for like the last two, three months to be intentional about just sitting down and be quiet, go sit down somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. So ideally, it would be great. I'm not a morning person, but mm-hmm. I feel like if I was, I would drink coffee, do a devotional and like read a book. When mm-hmm. I you know, just sit next to me and like just snuggle and then be ready for the kids you know what I mean and then once they're going down to bed I'll open up another book and then just kick my feet up with another candle and it's just so bougie just I want to sit yes. I like it I like it's that some of those candles, of those candles that just make you feel like you know <laughs> right. but um on the candle topic, do you, so right before, like the beginning of this year, we did a coping box podcast and I think I bought, I don't know, like five different candles and put it in my coping box. One of my candles, I still have, it turns into lotion. It's really cool. It turns into lotion. Mm-hmm. So you burn the candle and then once it gets liquid it's actually a lotion and it's lavender scent it's at tj it was at tj maxx it's amazing of course it was at tj maxx <laughs> so if you're having yourself a wow. candle just you know fine how did i not know this that is so cool and different <laughs> yes ma'am it's awesome okay so i know we asked you about your ideal day of self-care but you had mentioned i think on one of your social media posts that doing photography is a form of self-care for you so you care to elaborate on that part of it Yes. So I am a natural, like my love language is like acts of service. So for me, when I have a client come in, I like to like pamper them. So I get like drinks and food to eat. And then I'm like, Hey, do you need this? Do you need this? And then I love watching them transform. So they get Mm -hmm. their their makeup done in studio. And then I have like wardrobe to try on, just see what you like. Right. And to, when they turn around in the chair and their response is like, Oh my gosh, like, I look amazing. I'm like, I like I helped her get to that to get to that point. Right. And then another level of that is like, I don't even remember the first person who cried, but when my clients cry when they see their pictures, I'm like, bro, like I helped you get to that point. That's and awesome. Another That's little change in my mind. That's not that. No. So when I help them get to that point in the realization, like you are beautiful, you do matter, like you are powerful and they're crying over pictures that I took that they're going to show everybody and their grandkids will have it one day. And then their generation, I'm just like a little bit of me. Like I'm always thankful that people trust me enough to come to me and then trust me enough to capture the journey of life that they're on. So it's just a part of my acts of service. I see that. That's awesome. So yeah, you're thinking- and I love that. You're leading like your own legacy through your mm-hmm. photography. That's so dope. <laughs> it really oh, is. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw and I was looking at your pictures. I'm like, these are just so, so beautiful. And it made me think of, I know every now and again, I don't know if you see them pop up on Facebook where it's like this black and white photography of someone from like a hundred years ago. And it's like mm-hmm. captured, like the moment is captured. And when I saw your artwork, I had those same like vibes, those same chills, like this is beautiful. Like this is going to last, you know, like this is, it was just remarkable. Mm-hmm. And you do full service. Like the fact that you do hair, makeup, it's an experience. You're giving someone an experience. You're not just taking their photo. Anybody can take a photo, but right. you're, you're providing an experience. So that's awesome. Right. So that's one thing that, um, I kind of stand on as far as service because I feel like I can read a room pretty well and every client like nobody I shoot is a like an actual model and Mm -hmm. I have to remind women like I'm not taking pictures of supermodels I'm taking pictures of everyday women so that means you can come in here and not know what to do you don't got to be a professional like I get your professional makeup and hair done and then I will advise you with clothes because otherwise I remember being photographed and I feel like I was just like shoved in like click, click, click. And I'm like, oh my God, like you ain't going to like, what you doing here? So when right. I bring a client in, I'm like, I really, I really want you to be comfortable in your skin where you are because I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's terrifying. I mean, some people like taking pictures. 
but I hate taking pictures. I am terrified of taking pictures. I'm always nervous. So I just assume everybody who comes in is just as nervous as I would be. Yeah. In full transparency, I feel so awkward when I'm taking a photo. Like I always do like this hip thing in this side. <laughs> like it's like my hands on my hip and I like tilt to the side, but it's nothing else. Like I don't know what else to do. Because <laughs> another thing, like people think like I, because I pose my clients, they assume like I know how to pose when I can see what's happening. Uh-huh. But if you're taking a picture of me and you don't tell me what to do, like, is, is this my good slide? Is this <laughs> over here in this area I need to know? And I swear, whenever people take a picture of me, I'm just like, that came out terrible. Like, did, <laughs> tell me what to do, please. Right, right. And I, and I love that feedback. I would I would love to have a picture with that actual feedback and that mm-hmm. type of treatment. That's amazing. Never know. That's really Girlfriend, good. Girlfriend, child, you never know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with my hands. I'd be like, what am I do with them? What do you want? <laughs> right, so you end up in the picture, like, <laughs> like what are you doing? <laughs> right. Tell me everything from head to toe. Tell me what that's to do. awesome. And then by default, your clients are going to feel comfortable because you're giving them the keys to success. Like, there you go. There you go. And the first, I always say, pick your first outfit that you mm-hmm. need that like the least because this is our warm up phase. And it takes them like a little while, like, oh, okay. And then I show them behind the camera and they like, oh, okay. Hey. Right, because like, yeah, you can take pictures of other people, but what about me? Like, I'm different. I'm right. Different. Do you have know. different sizes for, for photos? Like if somebody wanted full service, like, do you have a, a wardrobe sizes or do you have like certain kinds of sizes? Have, as far as wardrobe, I do have different sizes for different body shapes. Is mm-hmm. that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So I okay. try to have a wide range of clothing. It's funny because I bought a maternity dress um, when I was pregnant with what my first, I think. And everybody, almost everybody I photographed have taken a picture in that dress. Really? Just because it's like very stretchy. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. It's, like it's a gown that just like drapes to the floor. It's super elegant. And okay. I think everybody, I'm putting everybody in that dress. Everybody like in this dress. Most, right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. So what's your why? I mean, you're doing something that we don't see people do all the time and you're giving a service, service on service with the photography and then just making them feel comfortable. And so what if you could have like a why? What what would you say your why is behind everything? Um, my why comes from the the acts of service, but mm-hmm. I think it was because I could have quit a few different times, right? But what brings me back is the clients who are like, you changed the way I see myself. You helped me to be more confident and to actually believe that I'm beautiful. And I'm like, okay. So that's not just a small statement. That's pretty big. And like, who am I to like have an off day or off client and then keep that from helping people, especially like in our right. area. Like there's a lot in New York, but it's not a lot in Jersey, like where I specifically am. Right. Mm-hmm. So I want to be able to continue to serve people in generations. Like one client recently, I, I did a generational shoot, um, grandkids, mom, and then grandma. And then the grandma recently passed away. And it was like, she cherishes those pictures so much more every single day. Yeah. And if I could just stop doing what I'm doing, then a lot of people will miss out on that. You know what I mean? Um, and then also it was my why started from just the moms. And then when I had my own kids, I was like, D, can somebody do this to me? Cause I need it. Like, please yeah. pay for me, make me feel pretty again so that I can feel like I'm not just a mom. I'm not just a wife. Like I'm Yvonne. Right. I'm not right. my mid's wife. I'm not Micah or Evelyn's mom. I'm an actual person with feelings and I want to yep. feel and look and you know beautiful and empowered so that's really my why boom and it's very good <laughs> hey there you go <laughs> the whole time I was like that. <laughs> 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 yes <laughs> what do you think some of the biggest things that you learned um in your in your business mm. oh that's my one Biggest lessons learned um, would probably be that every woman would need a reminder at some point of how beautiful or strong they are. Like every woman needs encouragement. 
like the what was movie was that like take care of your uh, your, your strong friend check on your strong friend right. kind of like that where i feel like the people you think are good are the ones who's in your inbox like oh i'm so self-conscious i hate how i look and i'm like okay like i would have never gotten that right. from you but knowing that also actually helped me to say okay i'm not alone in this and also right. helping take their story to share to other people is helpful not just for me but like for the women you know what i mean right um, so Speaking of um, taking stories and sharing them, I saw on your website about your 30 over 30 project and how I feel like that's a big impact um, effort that you're doing. Um, and so I would like for you to share about what you're doing, because I think it's I think it's dope. Um, I think it's also like super impactful for not only the women who are going to be photographed throughout this project, but also for the women who are, like you said, the voiceless to see that and then be empowered through others. Cause that's a thing. That's a whole thing. Right. So I've had this idea for, I mean, I guess from inception from since I was like, Oh, let's get dressed and my baby poop off of us. But I realized, <laughs> um, I don't even remember what age I turned, but I just, I, I seen the wrinkles in my forehead and I seen the smile lines and I see my eyelids drooping. And I was like, mm, since you're getting older, <laughs> you know what I'm going to be checking for much longer. And I was like, dang, how does that make me feel? Um, and then seeing like all the kids, like on the TV shows that just come out and it's like young people, young people. And, then yeah. the movies, and I was like, I never would have thought I would be this woman to question my youthfulness or my beauty is dependent on what other people think or feel about me. So when I thought about the project, I was like, okay, I already, I'm already drawn to older women anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And so let me just figure out a way to bring them in, but it's harder to convince them that they are worthy of it. You know what I mean? So yeah. the campaign is like, so I actually had a mentor who was like, Hey, I'm doing this. You should do it. And I was like, oh, you just made it sound way more easier. So I'm just going to use your slogan, your things. So that's where the 30 over 30 came from. Because before gotcha. I was just like, I met actually suggested that I shoot 20. I think when I was when I first, when I, I'm just turned 33. When I first turned 30, he was like, you should shoot 30 women this year since you're 30. And I was like, overwhelmed. I don't know, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to say this, but it's just put up one second. It's a train on my You hear that? I did. Okay. Still good. <laughs> so my reason for the 30 over 30 is to bring out the imagery that we need women to see like the Angela Bass like Angela Bassett mm. coming out and showing all her greatness is mm. my like I just like you should do 30 over 30 and they're like oh I'm too old and I'm like bam Angela like, there you go <laughs> yep. that's yep. all the proof you need like you know right. I mean? so yeah so that's where the inception came from Older women needing to appreciate themselves all ages. Like, I don't care if you're 93, 104, like, you need to be reminded that you still got it. You're still beautiful in all yeah. your glory. And we can learn from you, whether it's your lifestyle or your beauty regimen, any of that. Like, just know that you're beautiful. Live in your confidence so that you can uh, give that confidence to other women as well. Yeah, I would even say that's therapeutic in a lot of ways, because you could go your whole life without being catered to in a portrait style shoot, um, especially who your audience may be. I don't know who who it could be, but like you said, it could be someone very well in their 70s, 80s, 90s and would have this be their first moment and opportunity to be catered to. Like They probably have portraits of families. How many times you get you got the whole family on a portrait, but this right. one focus is you. Like that's so different. all done up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It definitely hits different when you don't got to worry about the kids. Like mm -hmm. it's funny when women come in and they're like, oh, I'm going to do this with my kids and for my husband or da, da, da. And I'm just like, yeah, but what about you? Like, what do you want? And they try to make the focus of, oh, my kids are here. Just take pictures of my kids. And I'm like, okay, we'll take pictures of the kids, but I'm gonna have you sit down. And then it's like, <laughs> nervous and then they take the picture and you're like oh I should do this like, right. yes you should you should not just the kids like it's really important for us to be it's okay to be the center of attention it's okay to love ourselves through that oh. 
I can tell you, I, man, I can only imagine how hard it must be to get a mom to just sit down. That's that's the hard, that's step one, right? <laughs> sit down and then stay there to have someone take care of her. Right. That that is a hard feat. <laughs> like that's, that is, that is that's even harder than someone verbally pra- praising you and as a woman accepting it. Because um, we've talked before about just the art of saying thank you and not mm-hmm. deflecting your work, your hard work, the things that you do. But th- that to me, you sitting down and taking that picture as a, a woman, a family, you know, family oriented, that probably is even harder because you can't, can't even fathom that moment. Like, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I, have, I make sure that my every client gets a printed picture. It's like, yeah, you can get the digital. That's a bonus. But like, you're going to get a printed picture. Because if I oh. give you only digital, you won't print it out. Right. But I give physical prints of all my clients. Uh, wait a minute. I have a brain fart. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, that's what I'm saying. Sorry. So <laughs> they would good. say like, why? I don't need to be printed. Well, I'm going to put it on the wall. I don't need to see my face on the wall. And I'm like, no, but it's different. Like, yes, it's okay to put your face on the wall, not just your babies or just your wedding pictures. Like, put yourself on the wall. And then I had a client blow one up. I was like, yes, girl. Yes. 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 That's awesome. Oh, that is so good. That is all. You know what? Yeah, it's always been something that I, in my mind, that I said I'm going to do, but I never actually like got around. Like, it's, like you said, because it's like you always putting everybody else in front of yourself. It, it happens so, so easily. That is, that is so dope. <laughs> there you go. This was an awesome session with you. So thank you so much for taking time out of your week. I've been learning more and more time is valuable. It's almost as good as money. So we appreciate the minutes that you have given today um, to share with us the beauty and what you do, your business. Um, and we like to praise our people who come on. So I really just want to shower and, you know, just kind of speak life into your business. I hope it grows Don't beyond me anything that you can get. No, seriously, like I want to speak into you. Like I want yes. your business to be bigger than anything you can even dream of. But because what you're doing is so awesome and amazing. So blessings to you, Yvonne. <laughs> So much. Absolutely. It's, you're doing more than just taking pictures. You're really creating experiences and you're really, you're getting down. It's like you're getting down and deep into who they are. Oh, you're scratching them at the them, surface. <laughs> right. Like you're making them realize who they are again, because we you know we're young and things like that we know, but like we need that reminder. You know, we always need that reminder and you're, and you're doing that. So good for you. Go ahead. So <laughs> So now it's time for reflective thought. Uh, We do a little segment called reflective thought and a tip of the day. So for our reflective thought, we're going to say, remember to always embrace yourself inside and out without failing, without ceasing. You are enough. And that's the reason all in itself to get dressed up. That's, that's, that's it. (laughs) That's that's all you need. Point blank, period. Period. With the T. (laughs) And tip of the day, get you a photo shoot. And also, (laughs) (laughs) we're going to use one of Yvonne's takeaways to check on your strong friend and that every woman needs encouragement. I love that. I love that so much. And it is so, so very true. Yes, ma'am. So thank you, everyone, for spending some quality time with your listening ears. Please, please, please check out our show notes for information links and reference within this episode. Make sure to follow your girl, Yvonne, at Y-E-C underscore creations on Instagram. And please leave a five-star rating and review if you not have already done so. (laughs) Subscribe to our podcast for instant access on new episodes. Leave a five-star rating and review again. (laughs) And you can find (laughs) us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at QB Podcast. Shout out to our podcast editor, Shania, at Princess Lay on Instagram. Um, See us back here soon for some quality time with Queen Beauty, peace and love. And before we go, I need to say that we started a blog. So we've got some blog posts coming out. Um, That's going to be really cool. So go on our website and you can see all of our blog posts. Peace.